the reporting of volumes between surveys is one of the flagship commands within the LSS program. And I'm going to demonstrate a volume calculation between a ground survey and an excavation. And this void is the volume I am going to calculate. The only requirement is that the two surveys overlap planimetrically and it's only across that overlapping planimetric area that the volumes will be calculated. However, if one survey is smaller than the other, you can always extend it by using one of the output design digitize commands such as template extend. And unlike CAD based modeling packages, there is no requirement to define a boundary in LSS. It will determine its own boundary by using the triangles of the DTM. So therefore, the volume calculations should be much quicker in LSS than in other packages. Report volume to other survey. We select the other survey. And the method we're going to use is triangles. This is arguably the most reliable, accurate and robust method of calculating volumes. It is otherwise known as complex vertical prisms and it accounts for the total void volume between any two surveys. Unless there's a good reason to use cross sections, which I will cover later on in this tutorial, the default option should always be triangles. If there are surfaces defined in the current survey, then the volume can be broken down into those surfaces within that survey. We don't have any surfaces defined, so therefore we're going to calculate the volume for the entire survey. When the current survey is above the other, we're going to report that as cut. It doesn't make any difference to the absolute result, it just flips the report round and it's obviously very important to know which is cut and which is fill, especially when you're working with models that show a close balance between the two. The report has now been produced and we have a cut area and a cut volume and cut volumes will always be reported as a negative figure, a fill area and a fill volume, a total area and a net volume which is the fill minus the cut. There is a line which has the word undetermined at the base and what you'll see here is that this value is equivalent to this value here and that is just telling us that over this area of 25,680 square meters the two surveys are identical. I mentioned earlier that it's possible to calculate a volume using sections and although it wasn't recommended I will show you the process just in case you need to use it. It will be of use if you are doing linear features such as roads where you want to calculate and the cut and fill for each chainage. It doesn't do mass haul but it will do the volumes by distance along a feature. The process will be you create a section position file you put the section interval in. Obviously the finer that interval the more accurate the volumes are going to be but don't go mad with this you don't want to put a one millimeter interval in. So 10 meters over this large area is good enough. Make sure that your offsets left and right of your center line of your section are big enough to cover the whole model, the, the, the current one and the, the one you're doing the volume to. You may find it easy just to put the alignment for the section down one side in which case you won't have a left you just have a right or vice versa. That's all we need to worry about there. I'm going to change the mode to be cursor and just start it here and finish it here so I know that at right angles to the start and end I'm going to overlap the survey. Escape, end and save. There you go, there are the sections. Okay. Report volume to other survey, this time using cross sections, using that section description file, 
The option to request SPF start and then changes allows you to calculate the volume just for a short section of that whole SPF range. It's shown us where it's done the sections to, so they've stopped at the edge of the survey. And for each chainage, we have a sectional area of cut and sectional area of fill. And as each chainage is added, we then have an intermediate volume between each successive chainage. And it's using Simpson's rule and area method for calculating the volume between the chainages. And then as we go down through this column, we have an accumulated volume of cut on the left hand column and fill on the right hand column. And if we go right to the bottom of this report, we will see a figure which is similar to the volume report we produced using the complex vertical prisms method, although it's never going to be quite that accurate. But at least it gives you a pretty good figure to work with and also gives you the cut and fill by chainage, which you don't get with the complex vertical prisms. It's also possible to calculate the volume to the underside of a heighted surface feature. And if we draw a section across this part of the ground survey, you will see that I've applied a surface feature which has a depth. It has a depth of 0.65 meters. I can now ask it to calculate the volume underneath the base of that surface feature. This could be used for formation levels, for construction, and it can also be used to calculate the volume for a stripped site where the soil has been removed. Report volume to other survey by triangles and it now gives me the option to calculate the volumes to the base of surface depths in the current survey. If there were several heighted surface features then it would be able to report those individually. Also if there were any surfaces which had a depth in the other survey then this tick box will be available too. And here's the report. There will always be an asterisk next to the surface name which relates to this description at the base, which confirms that the volume is being calculated to the underside of that 0.65 meter deep concrete surface. New users often ask how to calculate the volume of a stockpile. If that stockpile is on a flat base, then it's very simple. You can just do a volume to a fixed datum value. But almost always, the surface on which the stockpile rests is sloping or is undulating in some way. The situation often arises that you will go to a site and you will do a survey of a stockpile which is already there on site. And in order to calculate the volume of that stockpile, what we need to do is get the survey to a point where it doesn't have that stockpile in it. Let me show you this example here. I've digitized in a simple stockpile shape. To get the volume of this stockpile I need to go through two stages. First is I need to remove the points within that bottom of bank boundary and then save it as a version of the survey without the stockpile in it. Well with this number of points it will be just as easy for me to just go in and delete each point either individually or using string of observations that would be really quick and easy to do. So there are several different ways to attack this particular problem. So I would recommend that that's what you would do with this number of points. So remove observation, buy a string of observations and just get rid of them that way. It's really, really quick. Alternatively, let's assume there are lots of points and it's a complicated shape. What we can do is add a surface feature doesn't matter what the surface feature is as long as it's not void. Seeding by line allows me to say I want to fill that enclosed area and that enclosed area together. Okay. 
that's now highlighted the stop bar and this will be useful anyway because if you're doing the volume for lots of different stop bars you can give each one a different surface feature and therefore you can report them separately. I'm now going to do remove observation by selection filter and just for that surface feature the points that lie within the boundary I want to get rid of. Okay, Obviously a lot slower than the previous method but it'll work with really complicated shapes so it might be more efficient. As you can see now from the shape of these contours the ground underneath that stop pile isn't flat so it would have been incorrect for me to have calculated a volume to a basic datum. Okay, I now save as and call this survey without stockpile. If I were to draw a section and include the one with stockpile, so the, the current model is the one without and the one with is green, you'll see that we have two shapes, two surveys and it's this volume between the two that I'm going to calculate. And by having a surface feature there, when I choose report volume to other survey, pick the stockpile model by triangles, I can just restrict the volume to that surface area. Doesn't matter whether we report it as cut or fill. But there you are, there's a total volume there of 2,945 cubic metres. Without a surface feature defined, I delete surface feature. I can still do the report, but when I go to report volume to other survey, for entire survey, it doesn't break the volume down into individual surface packets and the majority of this is reporting that the two surveys are identical for most of the area it's just this small stockpile area that actually is producing a volume for us. There are a number of additional options within the report volume to other survey some of which I will show worked examples of but others I will simply refer to the help documentation and invite you to research those additional options within that existing documentation. But what I do want to show you is the zones survey option. And to do that I'm going to over display a zones survey. The zone survey happens to be at zero level, it doesn't matter what the levels are for a zone survey, it's the planimetric position of it which is important. And each of these areas represents a royalty payment area and each will have its own surface feature. And you can see here I've used output surface details text to list these surfaces. So when I overdraw them I can see which zones are which. When we do our volume calculation we can break down the volumes by surfaces in the current survey and we can also break down the volumes further by zones or surfaces in a third survey. So I'm going from the ground survey to the excavation but I'm breaking down the volume further by the landowner's surface features. So I can pick up the volumes for just one of the surfaces and it's recognised that there are five different surface features in that zone survey or I can do the entire survey. And the report is produced and it breaks down the volumes by the zones in the zones survey. So going from ground to excavation relative to the zone survey landowners for zone Z1 we have this cut this fill and this net volume and then we move on to Z2, Z3 and Z4 and so on. We will now look at the reporting of volumes between two surveys relative to above and below a third survey. So in my section drawing I'm going to show the current ground survey 
the excavation which is the survey I'm going to do the volumes to and then I'm also going to show the stratum 1 survey what we'll be able to do here is calculate the volume from ground to excavation and how much of that is above this seam model and how much of it is below report volume to other survey the third survey is stratum 1 and it will break the report down into surface areas there are no surfaces defined in the current survey we're going from ground to excavation relative to above and below the stratum 1 survey so the total cut and fill above the stratum 1 is 1.049 million cubic meters we then have a repeat which is the total and then we have the amount below the third survey of 95,765 cubic meters Now in this situation it would be simple just to calculate the volume from one to the other and then add it on to the one below the other but in those situations where you have a mixture of cut above, cut below, fill above and fill below then you don't want to be double counting by simply adding two volume reports together. The help documentation contains a very useful diagram which shows the current survey as the solid black line the other survey as this line and then the third survey as this line and you can see here that you can have cut above and below the third survey further options include above and below a tilted plane and above and below a datum level And here we see the original ground, the excavation and a datum line shown on the section. So we would have cut above that datum and cut below that datum. The cut bands by layers and cut bands by column are easier to show you on diagrams from the help documentation this is cut band by layers and by columns horizontal bands will allow you to stipulate the horizontal band vertical interval from a base elevation if we start at 100 meters at an interval of half a meter with a maximum number of bands of 25 it will give us the volume between individual elevation values this will be useful for calculating reservoir capacities and finally between related surveys when entirely in cut you can stipulate up to 36 additional surveys which you can select and then it will calculate the cut volume between each individual and the total. Each survey must be specified in order either increasing or decreasing level. You cannot mix the surveys and keep going from higher to lower as you go down through the calculation.